So, welcome, Susan. Thanks a lot for coming over here for uh, to share with uh, with people about your work and uh, the important message you're trying to put across to the educators, uh, also to students, that uh, to involve patients more in their healthcare. And could you please like tell us more about the work you're doing? Right. What um, the work that we're doing really is trying to engage patients and caregivers and community members in the development and the delivery of medical education mm -hmm. so that medical education really reflects the humanness mm -hmm. of healthcare and that it's um, real world, that the medical education keeps pace mm -hmm. with you know changes in healthcare, um, and that it's patient-centered. Mm -hmm. So I've seen and been engaged in projects where patients um, partnered with educators and clinicians and researchers, mm -hmm. um, and we actually identified mm -hmm. gaps in, mm -hmm. in the education curricula. And we, we helped craft learning objectives that mattered most to the patient community. So it's this effort to build on top of the textbook mm -hmm. um, information that medical students learn and add the humanness and the patient-centeredness that's that's sometimes getting lost in healthcare today. Yeah, and could you tell us like how did you get involved? How did you get on this path, and like share with us? Well, I got on this path because well, my profession was international trade, finance, banking, but then I had my little boy Cal, and as a newborn, he suffered brain damage from his newborn jaundice. It was something that was completely preventable. Um, and I started really doing research to understand how could this happen in a developed country like the United States. And I learned about all of the gaps in our healthcare system in medical education, mm -hmm. in communication, in our accreditation, in how care is delivered. Mm -hmm. So other mothers like me who had children who also suffered brain damage from jaundice, and that's called kernicterus, mm -hmm. that you that is rare, used to be, it was eradicated, you know, in the 1970s. But together we partnered with um, researchers and educators and clinicians to make sure that we put an end to this harm to newborns. Mm -hmm. So we got engaged in creating um, uh, continu continuing medical education curricula for professionals. Mm -hmm. We did grand rounds um, to residents at healthcare institutions, and I'll tell you, that when you speak to a resident and you tell the story of the jaundice and the, and the brain damage of the, ba the babies and you show pictures, the residents would come up and say, I will never ignore jaundice ever in my career. So we know that it mm -hmm. sticks with them and it impacts them. So it's also like the power of stories that you're telling and exactly. your personal story. I guess that's it, also what magnifies, augments the message and exactly. and it makes brought it to stick. Life. It brought to life what they're learning yeah hoping they're learning in textbooks. You know, textbook and text can do mm -hmm. so much, but having a, a real life patient or mom or baby yeah. explain the whole process of the onset of this, of this harm and injury, mm -hmm. what I said, what I didn't say, what the doctor said, the failures in communications, the, the failures in knowledge. So it brought soul you know, into their it textbook so and made it real in real life. Yeah, thank you for doing this. I'm a resident myself. I also like teach students, so I see how how much you remind me and my colleagues and the audience today um, mm -hmm. of this important message. And uh, I really hope also this, the documentary that you show, let's talk about the documentary. Uh, to Air is Human, right? Mm -hmm. We just saw the trailer. Could you talk a bit more about it and where can we watch it? Sure. The full length documentary is called To Air is Human. It was produced by uh, a gentleman named Mike Eisenberg, the uh, filmmaker. And it was really a call to action on his part, the producer, mm -hmm. his father who died of a brain tumor, um, was a great leader in the United States in healthcare. So he wanted to honor his father and create a film to call the world to action about safer healthcare. And so we met, the filmmaker and I, because his father had invited me two decades ago to testify in the United States about Cal and Pat. And so the, the film, To Air is Human, is full length and it has a lot of solutions and advice and it really is about our problems, but it's more about hope and solutions. 
And so the film itself can be found online. I think if you Google To Air as Human, the mm -hmm. documentary, it is a film online for purchase through Amazon and other online movie channels. No, we, can't, we encourage everyone to really watch it. I think it will be very useful so to show it to medical students, perhaps at the medical schools. Like I wish I could watch it, you know, as part of my curriculum. Right. I think it would be very useful. Right. It has been screened. I spoke to the filmmaker last night, yeah. and it has been screened at 120 medical schools. And so right. this is getting attention, and a lot of people believe it should be required right. for um, you know first-year medical students to understand that to err is human. They will make mistakes, but we need to learn from those mistakes and engage the patient in creating solutions. Yeah, and sometimes it's good to make as many mistakes and as early as possible, right? right. So that we catch them early and exactly. we know that later on, when there is a bigger risk of bigger errors, That's we already right. know how to prevent it. That's right. So uh, I think it would be very, very useful documentary to screen in all medical schools in the ideal world. I agree. Yeah. And the, the documentary is very artfully done, although there's a lot of statistics and a lot of um, very well-known healthcare leaders. It weaves the story, the human story, of yeah. my family and it, and my son and my daughter um, as they've grown up. You know, after these eras in my family, and they both of them have become, you know, warriors mm -hmm. and optimistic and hopeful about you know improving our healthcare system. Yeah. So it touches on real life of my family, but interweaves you know yeah. statistics and messages from leaders about hope and solutions. I think we need those human stories. And I was at one of the, during one of the sessions here at Amy, we could hear uh, a whole presentation about storytelling right. and medical education and how much it sticks with you and helps you to, to retain the information Absolutely. you will really later need, not only about compassion and empathy towards people you treat right. or you interact with, but even like the, the medical knowledge when it's somehow inserted or immersed in some emotional situation, then you somehow recall it easier. So exactly. we really need stories, uh, different stories also to help right. us uh, right. not only be, like remain humans in our work, in our world, uh, but I guess also like to learn and uh, yeah, to, exactly. to, to continue interacting with each other. Yep, I agree. And I think that storytelling, like you said, can it can bring to life the humanness of healthcare, but it also teaches and galvanizes and reinforces clinical skills. Absolutely. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being here with us and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. I certainly will. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you.